This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly realms, the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive as I am taught the Word of God. My life is changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have a Bible, we're going to start out this morning in Mark chapter 11. We're still in this series, The Miracles of the New Testament. We come to number 35 by our reckoning, Jesus withers the fig tree on the road from Bethany. I believe 2023 is a year of miracles at Faith Christian Center, as we just heard in these testimonies. And I believe that if we will take action and enter into worship with all of our might, with all of our strength, if we'll believe God's word, confess God's word, and take action on God's word, we will see God move among us in a mighty way. Now, what we're doing in 2023 is we're walking through the miracles of the New Testament, and we are looking for patterns and principles. Because if God's people would learn to identify patterns and principles of healing, patterns and principles that occurred during the miracles, not just of the New Testament, but of the Bible, if we could see those, spot those, and walk as they did, then we could live our lives and hardly have an unmet need. Now, the word believer means someone who takes action on the Word of God, someone who hears, confesses, and takes action on the Word of God. And the believer then brings forth the promise of God's Word in his or her own life. The believer brings forth the promises of God's Word in his or her own life. Now, <laughs> You know, I, I work all week. Actually, I work two weeks on a message, but he, he's always editing my stuff. So here we go. So this, this morning is a completely life-changing message. And when you get it and then learn to walk in it, it's a total life-changer. But what is it about us? that we constantly look for quick fixes. Now, I'm old enough to at least admit I would love quick fixes. You know, if I could take a pill and be at my perfect weight in the morning, that'd be great. But at least I'm old enough to realize that's not possible. And if I see something like that advertised, I know it's not true. Can you see that? But what is it about us that we want... We want to do what's easy. We want to do what's convenient. And then when our back is against the wall, we want a quick fix. And it doesn't really work like that. Now, this miracle is so critical because even in the life of Jesus, anointed Jesus, the Son of God Jesus, the Son of Man Jesus, this miracle took time and if it if it is a historical fact that a miracle in the life of Jesus took time then why would we think a miracle in our lives might not take some time I'm getting ahead of myself let's get to it so we all know Mark 11 22 to 24 I love the King James and Jesus answering saith unto them have faith in God for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. So anybody that's been at Faith Christian Center 
a month or more has heard those words. But what is the story behind those words? Let's go to Mark 11 and here in the NIV verse 12. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Now, why did Jesus do this? Because he was hungry and disappointed he couldn't have a snack? Of course not. He did what he did. See, he knew, he knew that the eyes of the 12 were on him 24-7, and then the other disciples, and then the crowds and the peoples. He did what he did to illustrate faith and how faith works. He did what he did to illustrate faith and how faith works. There's a great misunderstanding about faith. How, how did Henry Ford build Ford Motor Company? Talk to me. How did Henry Ford build, and, and there's no evidence whatsoever that he was ever born again. How did Henry Ford build Ford Motor Company? Faith. He believed he could do it. And then he what? Took action. How did Thomas Edison invent the light bulb and then go on to found the company he founded? Faith. There's no evidence he was ever a born-again Christian, but how did he do it? Faith. See, we, we, we misunderstand faith because we, we want to keep it over here amongst our tribe. But faith is a great power. Now, of course, there's no reason for it to do these astounding things over here on the secular side and not do astounding things over here for us on the Christian side. Can you see that? We got, our, we got a guy right now, I mean, putting rocket, rockets up in the air, doing all kinds of stuff. He's doing stuff NASA said was not possible. How's he doing that? And we know, I mean, my goodness, not born again, not born again, nowhere near born again. But how's he doing what he's doing? Talk to me, how's he doing what he's doing? Faith. He believes he can, and then he just takes action on what he believes. Can you see that? All right. But in all those examples I just gave you, did it happen overnight? John D. Rockefeller, Standard Oil Company. Did it just happen overnight? Did it just happen in a day? Did it happen in a week? Did it happen in a month? Did it happen in a year? What's involved? Talk to me. What's involved? Time. Time. But see, a lot of Christians and full gospel Christians, unfortunately, are kind of more given to this than non-full gospel Christians, and that is we, we want magic. We want magic. That's why it's so appealing, the January Daniel fast and the, the prayer chains and the, uh, you know, last Sunday we anointed with oil. We laid hands on the sick, but we, we don't do those things all the time to everybody because if it becomes common then it loses its power. And then also, if we make it common, people count on that rather than them praying every day themselves. Can you see that? The Bible even says it was not the season for figs. So was Jesus stupid? See, when you read the Bible, it's okay to have your brain engaged. It's okay to think while you're reading the Bible. It was the Bible, the, the, the writer of uh, Mark, who was Peter dictating, the apostle Peter dictating to uh, Mark, specifically says it was not the season for figs. So was Jesus stupid? Did he not know? I mean, the creator of the universe, the son of God, was he so stupid? He didn't know that it was not the time for figs? Of course not. He did what he did to illustrate faith and how faith works. Then the next day, everybody, tell your neighbor, the next day. Yes. Tell the neighbor, neighbor on the other side, the next day. Yes. In Mark 11, 20, 21, in the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, 
the fig tree you cursed has withered. See, that is the story behind those famous verses. And that's when Jesus spoke those words that we find in Mark 11, 22 to 24. I love the King James. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. So question, if Jesus, sinless Jesus, anointed Jesus, who was the Son of Man and the Son of God, spoke to a tree and it took overnight for his words to come to pass, why do you think you can speak words and not have to wait for it to come to pass? Why do you think you can speak words and not have to wait for it to come to pass? And this, my friends, is the meaning of the parable in Luke 18. Luke 18, 1 says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show that they should always pray and not give up. Men should always pray and never give up. And that parable has been misconstrued and made to appear by preachers that we're dealing with an unjust judge and he's capricious and he's unpredictable and you, there's no telling what he's going to do and we got to talk him into it and we got to we got to we got to try and force his hand by fasting or we got to we got to deserve it or we got to earn it or we have to become good enough to receive it from him nonsense the meaning of the parable is plainly stated in verse 1 Man should always pray and never give up. The point of the parable isn't that God is an unjust judge and that we have to harass him to get our needs met. No, a thousand times no. The point of the parable is that men should always pray and never give up. See, the problem is we're just not diligent enough when it comes to the thing, things of God. We're just not diligent enough when it comes to the things of God. And we did a series in 2019 we called How to Write Your Own Ticket with God. And in that series, and even in this series, Miracles of the New Testament, we've seen how often a four-step process is employed by God in miracles. Say it, do it, receive it, and tell it. But has the thought ever occurred to you that you can say it yourself? I said, you know, I'm waiting for a word from the Lord. Has the thought ever occurred to you that you can say it for yourself? I said, has the thought ever occurred to you that you can say it for yourself? Amen. Has the thought ever occurred to you that rather than pray about your mountain, you can speak to your mountain? As a believer in Christ, you can speak to it, whatever it is. Now, I had the most interesting experience in the last seven days. And I know we're not walking by experiences, but I'm in the school of the Holy Spirit and... Uh, so I pay attention when I'm in class. So I, 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 I did not have anyone lay hands on me last Sunday. I did not have anyone anoint me with oil last Sunday. But I've had a couple of issues going on. I've had recurring pain in my feet. And the right and the left and the left and the left and the right. And I've been fighting that as it happens in real time with Colossians 2.15, Galatians 3.10. And, uh, but it's, it's been kind of a thing. And then something was wrong down on the inside of me. And I knew it for quite some time. And I would feel it. And then I'm here Sunday. And nobody laid hands on me. Nobody anointed me with oil. I'm just praising the Lord. I'm just rejoicing in the Lord. It wasn't until Wednesday. It, I, I noticed I was healed of both of those issues. I mean, just by being in the vicinity of the Word of God and the moving of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And then I stood here Wednesday night and I said, that leaves me with only one thing to pray about with regard to my body. And uh, of course, knowing the devil, some of you know the devil more closely than others of us do. <laughs> <laughs> but knowing the devil, what do you think happened Wednesday night? See, if you think that just because you want a battle, 
that you are done and finished with Satan in that area of your life, you do not know who your adversary is because he is a low down skunk. And so, but the most amazing thing happened as I was sleeping Wednesday night. Every time I turned, I felt that down on the inside of me, like something was, you know, wrong. And, but I'm asleep. But my spirit man heard the Holy Spirit say, see, I'm asleep. My mind is asleep. But my spirit man, see, your spirit man doesn't go to sleep. My spirit man heard the Holy Spirit say, just as I am gloriously and marvelously and wondrously saved, I am gloriously and marvelously and wonderfully healed. Amen. Or I'd hear it this way. I'm just as gloriously and marvelously and wondrously healed as I am gloriously and marvelously and wondrously saved. Amen. And I heard that. Must have happened a dozen times while I'm sleeping Wednesday night. I get up in the morning and uh, those symptoms are gone. But again, just because you win a victory doesn't mean you're done with him. I just read, I'm in, I'm in uh, Luke's gospel in the annual Bible reading and in Luke's gospel in particular, it says that when Jesus finished his so-called temptation and he, did, he overcame Satan by quoting the Bible to Satan three different times, it specifically says in Luke's gospel that Satan left him for until a more opportune time. And so, and so what do you think? I stand up here and I give my testimony Wednesday night and what do you think happens Thursday? Here come the symptoms, but here's what I did. Because see, when I'm in class and when I'm in the school of the Holy Spirit, I'm paying attention. In fact, I'm paying attention when I'm asleep because my spirit man never sleeps nor slumbers. My spirit man is alive unto God 24-7, 365. And so when those symptoms came to me Thursday, about a half a dozen times, I, I, didn't, I didn't pray I didn't do a Daniel fast. I, I didn't, you know, get out the anointing oil. I didn't have anybody lay hands on me. I just lifted my hands and I said with my mouth, open my mouth. I never understand people praying silently unless, you know, there's, there may be a special time to pray silently. But I mean, in general, I pray out loud. I lifted my hands and I said, Father God, I'm so happy that I am just as gloriously and marvelously and wondrously healed as I am gloriously and marvelously and wondrously saved. Amen. And I've had no symptoms since. <clears throat> what do you have in your mouth? See, the miracle's in your mouth, but what do you have in your mouth? A complaint? The symptoms, and men have to be very careful about this because men, you know, men love sympathy. And the, 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 the obvious place to get sympathy for a man is the wife. Well, let me tell you how I'm feeling. What do you have in your mouth? What do you have in your mouth? Now, the next two Sundays, we're going to insert a couple of messages into this series, and we're going to talk about how this works. Lift both your hands to heaven and say it out loud to your Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. I'm just as gloriously and marvelously and wondrously healed as I am gloriously and marvelously and wondrously saved. Now, I think, I think the reason maybe I went down this road a little bit this week was I stood right about here and I said to a young girl last Sunday morning, I said, you're already healed. As a lifelong student of the Word of God, there are things that I know 
to be theologically true, but I'm having to work on how to walk in them practically. And so by the Spirit, not my mind, by the Spirit, I said to her, you're already healed. But I know that to be true theologically. The challenge is to walk in it. See, we might know something to be theologically true from the Word of God, but you got the news and you got Satan and you got all this, you know, I mean, it's like there's negativity in the air. How do you walk in it? And so also it seemed to me it couldn't be coincidental with this message coming up today on Mark 11, 22 to 24. You have to answer the symptom. You have to answer the unpaid bill. You've got to answer the unmet need. You've got to say something. And what are you going to say? And actually what I heard the Holy Spirit saying while I was sleeping Wednesday night is exactly what we taught in the Holy Week Revival 2024, 2023. And that is that we, that, that we have a two-fold redemption. We talked about last Sunday how I don't have to talk God into healing me. It is his nature to heal. He doesn't just heal good people. If he just healed good people, how could in the four gospels, how could he over and over and over and over heal everybody? I mean, it's obvious when you heal everybody, they're not all good. But see, Satan wants to get us going on a misadventure that I've got to earn it. I've got to deserve it. I got to get enough people in agreement with me. You know, I got to sign up for some uh, con artist preachers, January Daniel fast. I got to do this. I got to do that. No, no, no. Learn from the master how to exercise faith. You don't talk about your problem. You speak to your problem. And the most potent words that you can speak to your problem are the words of God. We need to start speaking to the circumstances of life. Unless you start, you'll never be able to walk in it. Mark eleven fourteen. 14, then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Then he said to the tree, and his disciples heard him say it. Then he said to the tree, and his disciples heard him say it. Then he said to the tree, and his disciples heard him say it. Jesus spoke to that tree. Now, it was just a sermon illustration. Then the next day, in the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. In the morning, the next day. So even with Jesus, it took some time for the tree to obey his words. And it will take some time for the circumstances of your life to obey your words. Well, pastor, how does it work? How does faith work? John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will. The word there is ate sete, which is the Greek word from ateo, demand. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will make your demand. Whatever you demand is your rights and privileges under the new covenant, and it shall be done for you. Now, that, that phrase is genesetai. We'll get to that. So abide, John 15, 7, means to live in, settle down in, and take up residence in. Not an overnight stop, long term, to take up residence in the word of God, and it shall be done for you. Genesetai means it will come to pass. It will come to pass. It'll come to pass. It'll come to pass. You know, many years ago, up at I-30, we learned to say this, the money is coming. And that is so accurate because that's the way it works. You know, I'm, I'm 68 years old. I've been preaching the gospel 50 years. I've never had a Brinks truck pull up yet to the church and, and jump a load. It comes. I said it comes. Hallelujah. And it shall be done for you. Genesetai. 
it shall come to pass. It shall be done. It will be done. It will happen. It will come to pass. The word ask here is the same word Jesus used in John 14, 13, 14. And I will do whatever you ask. That is that same word. I to say to whatever you demand as your rights and privileges under the new covenant in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask, there it is again, I te say te, from the word ateo, you may ask me for anything in my name. But wait a minute, we have this second word used in that verse as well, genesetai, and I will do it. And it will, this word means to come to pass, it shall be done, it will be done, it will happen, it will come to pass. Now listen, like a baby in the womb that's hidden for now, it's going to come out. It's going to come forth. It's going to come to pass. In other words, this process of faith is like being pregnant. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I remember one time Kenneth Hagin's grandson, Craig, asked me, because we, we, we were on TV in Tulsa every Sunday morning while they were getting ready to go to church, and he said, you don't teach faith like the others. What's the difference? And I said, well, I don't know. But I told him, I said, one of the first guys that I got a hold of was Paul Yonggi Cho in Seoul, Korea. And there was an oriental slant to it, but he had come up from a, he had come into faith, but not through that tradition. And in his book, The Fourth Dimensions, he talks about getting pregnant with the word of God. You get pregnant. I remember sitting in a restaurant. We were meeting in the hotel. You know, we, man, we slugged it out in that hotel. Four months, two, two four years, two months, and two Sundays. And I remember sitting in a restaurant and drawing the floor plan of that little building up at I-30 and filled a road on a napkin. I remember sitting in my office up there and mentally walking through this building, you know, walking through, picturing being in this room and that room and going down the hall and, and all, all of this. You know, you get pregnant with the Word of God. Are you, are you pregnant with trouble or are you pregnant with joy? Amen. Are you pregnant with uh, poverty or are you pregnant with prosperity? Amen. <laughs> Some of you have been taking too many abortion pills. You know what you, know what, you, know what you do? You, you leave Faith Christian Center and you go out and you Facebook. <laughs> I'm very reluctant to say what I heard him say, but I'm going to say it. You leave Faith Christian Center and you go out and you Facebook a Lingerfeld hater. And you just hose down your pregnancy with an abortifacient. You got to bring it forth. Any, any woman here ever been pregnant? Let me see your hand. Anyone? Now you men, don't you dare. Not at Faith Christian Center. I'll come out there and slap you. Any woman ever been pregnant? Let me see your hand. Woman been pregnant? Do you or do you not, once you know, take great care in what you consume? Right. Amen. Do, talk to me. Yes. Well, why don't you do that spiritually? That's right. That's good. See, I'm, I'm not just, I'm pregnant with not just a million dollars. I mean, I think I'm pregnant with quintuplets here <laughs> so I I can't be ingesting any uh, roundup are you hearing me I cannot be going to lunch with a bunch of haters see I gotta I'm pregnant with the word of God so I have to be cons careful with what I consume Bring forth. And doesn't the phrase bring forth imply time? How about it shall come to pass? Listen, you know how many times this word is used in the New Testament? This alone is shocking. This word is used 671 times in the New Testament. Now that should get your attention. See, people want magic. But faith doesn't work like that. People want magic, but faith doesn't work like that. 
This process of faith is like being pregnant. We bring forth the word of God over time. This is what we discussed in the spring power lunch inside out. And this is why people fail. They don't stay with the word. They don't stay with the word of God in their confession. And they don't stay with the word of God in their action taking. They allow their hearts to get discouraged. I just read in Mark's gospel, Jesus said, he gave the parable of the sower. And he said, if you do not understand this parable, you will not understand any parable. And people hear the word and they receive it with joy. But they get discouraged. Look, <laughs> of course he's going to send you a discouraging word. Of course, of course, of course. Of course, of course, of course. You hear the word, man, you get all excited. You know, glory! Man, you're pumped up. You're ready to go. Man, you're ready to kill Goliath. You're ready to go out there. You're ready to slay dragons. You're ready to win. You're ready to prevail. You're ready to overcome. And then you get on Facebook. Faith brings forth the promises of God. It's like being pregnant and it takes time. Just like destroying your life took time. Building a life takes time. Genesetai is a, is a verb tense of the Greek word genomai. And it is used 671 times in the New Testament. And it means to emerge, to become to transition from one realm or condition to another. And that's what we did, sister. We transitioned from the poor realm to the rich realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means to come into being. It means to happen. Tell your neighbor, it's happening at Faith Christian Center. The thought of this Greek word is like something being born, something coming into being. Genesetai is how the kingdom of God works. The believer meditates on the word of God until the word becomes real enough to come out of his or her mouth until it becomes real enough for that believer to take action on it. Then the believer brings forth the promises of God's word in his or her own life. Now we know Mark eleven twenty two to 24, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed <coughs> and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things are every desire? When you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. We know those words, but have you ever noticed this, that verses 22 and 23 have to do with saying? And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, he shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. 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 This is the vestige of the authority of Adam resident in man. And it is accentuated when you become born again. And then it is accentuated again when you get filled with the Holy Spirit of God. But verse 24 has to do with praying. Therefore I say unto you what things for every desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Believe that you receive them. That's not tomorrow. That's not next week. That's not, I got to wait for a January Daniel fast. No, believe that you receive them. I believe I receive. 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 But even here in verse 24, we've been missing an important ingredient. If you'll go back and watch the 2018 Holy Week Revival, we made the point, and this is critical, faith will work by saying it, and faith will work by praying it, but when you pray it, you still have to say it. Faith will work by saying it, and faith will work by praying it, but when you pray it, you still have to say it. You have got to find scriptures that cover your case to do what Jesus did in what we call the temptation of Christ and you have got to answer the devil. The word of God in me is a living thing. The word of God in you is a living thing. But how many of you know just because you plant a seed doesn't mean it's job accomplished. It has got to be watered. It might have to be fertilized. 
That's why the Bible does not say faith cometh by having heard. Faith, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Why? Because a seed, the word of God is a seed and the word of God's got to be fertilized and the word of God's got to be watered. The Lord told me in January of 2018 to quit fooling around and get Faith Christian Center paid off. And he told me he wanted Sue and I to give a million dollars of it. Okay, great. And uh, I get over to February of 2018. We're on a pr study retreat, and I'm in the, out in the road in the woods praying. And, and he told me. He said, you're letting go of things. And he talked to me about this very thing. And he said, you've got to water this. You make this confession about this hundredfold coming in because he told me how to give a million dollars. We didn't have a million dollars on hand that we could get our hands on. He, he told me how to do it. He said, send $10,000 to Fred and Betty Price from your personal account to them personally, no church involved, no tax deduction involved, a gift to them, then turn around and believe me for a hundredfold on the $10,000. All right. But he told me in February, he said, you're letting go of things. He said, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, you've got to water what you have believed me for you've got to water it with confession and prayer every day now see if, pastor if that worked why doesn't work for everybody because everybody's not willing to do it Amen. they're not willing to stay with it well pastor I'm offended because on the screen during the offer times it says you and Sue gave over 1.7 million dollars on that million dollar commitment I don't care if you're offended or not. I found out who I'm serving. Amen. I said, I found out who I'm serving. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his name is not El Chipo. Amen. He's not like your ex-husband. I found out who I'm serving. And I found out money doesn't matter to him. And I found out he's not afraid of zeros. And I found out actually, truth be known, he doesn't, he doesn't even care about money. He cares about the heart. And if I'll have a right heart, then he can trust me with more. Amen. Every day, man, you got to water it. So what's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying about your life? What are you saying about your wife? What are you saying about your husband? What are you saying about your health? What are you saying about your children? Are you saying your children are lost? You're saying your children are backslid? You're saying, you're saying your wife's fat? You're saying your husband can't make a living? What are you saying? What's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of your mouth? Because whatever's coming out of your mouth is what you're going to have. One, two, three, four, five years hence. There's a miracle in your mouth. But too many Christians have got a, a waste disposal mouth. And they have slop buckets for years. They're willing to listen to any negative thing about any man or woman of God. They all have faults. I knew every great man in my day in this country. And they all had faults. You know why they all had faults? Because none of them were named Jesus. Every one of them. But I didn't focus on that. Because the Bible says that a man who receives a prophet as a prophet receives a prophet's reward. I was focused on what I could get out of it. Pastor, that's selfish. No, that's intelligent. They all had faults, every one of them. I could stand here and name their faults, but I'd never do it. I loved them. Amen. I got what I could out of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We listen to evil reports. I read just the other day in the Gospels, Jesus said, be careful how you listen. I mean, if you, when you ladies were pregnant, did you listen to heavy metal music nonstop? You don't want some psycho baby, so you, even if that's your thing, you don't listen to that when you're pregnant. Don't want a mental case as a child. No, when a woman's pregnant, she's, how much, you know, the big thing, I bet we've lost a thousand people out of Faith Christian Center out of drinking, over drinking, at least a thousand, at least a thousand, at least a thousand. 
But you women, when you were pregnant, did you give up drinking? Now, don't, don't, don't act like, a Pastor, I never had a drop. <laughs> when you got pregnant, did you give up drinking? See, they're afraid to say yes. I'll just say it for you. You gave up drinking. See, and that's why a lot of folks, you wonder, how come, how come people, how come people uh, don't, don't see their dreams coming to pass and all this? Well, because they, they're, they're, not, they're not in strict training. See, there are many, many, many times Paul talked about athletic events illustrating this life we live for Christ. And if I want the prize, see, I got to go into strict training. Do you understand that? I mean, I, I, I can't be boozing it up. I can't be overeating. If, I, if I'm going to run a race, I can't, I can't do it. Well, Pastor, I, those days are gone. I'm not in high school anymore. You are in a race whether you know it or not. And you're not in a race against me, and I'm not in a race against you. You are in a race on the track by yourself, and you are running against your potential. You are running again. What could you do for God if you were completely focused? Amen. What could you do for God if you th did what Hebrews says and you threw off every sin, entangling sin? What could you do for God? What could you do for God if you'd stop putting money first? What could you do for God? You're on a track, but you're not running against me and I'm not running against you. You're running against your potential. Amen. What could you do for God? What could you bring forth? You know, you can't, you can't bring forth on video games. You can't bring forth watching reruns. You can't bring forth wasting time. Amen. You got to plant the seed. And the seed is the incorruptible word of the living God. And then you've got to nurture that seed. You got to fertilize that seed. You got to water that seed. And you got to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And I realize people get bored with me because they know if they're gone five years and they come back, in fact, the lady told me right out there, she moved off to some other state, came back. She says, oh my gosh, she said, nothing's changed. I said, absolutely not. We're just a little grayer, but other, and we're, I told her, I said, we're a little grayer and a little richer. Other than that, nothing's changed. Amen. Well, how, how long do I have to keep coming to Faith Christian Center and hearing about faith? Well, until we take the name off the building, which is not happening in my lifetime. Amen. Because see, this is what works. Theories, fads, opinions, none of that works. You know how you know it doesn't work? Because they keep changing. They keep changing. It keeps changing. But you just stay with the Word of God. You stay with the Word of God. You stay with the Word of God. Lift your hands again and say, Thank you, Father God. I am just as gloriously and marvelously and wondrously healed as I am, gloriously and marvelously and wondrously saved. Let's do it again. Thank you, Father God. I am just as gloriously and marvelously and wondrously healed as I am, gloriously and marvelously and wondrously saved. See, there's not a person here that could explain the salvation experience. It is so marvelous. It is wondrous. It is glorious. And none of us here to, this morning deserved it. But why is it when we come to healing, we want to deserve it? We want to earn it. No, it's the same thing. Actually, it's two sides of the same coin. It is marvelous in our eyes. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and it is marvelous in our eyes what he has done for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So like last Sunday I said, ready and willing to receive. Three key words, ready 
and willing to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I just operate in the realm of that Greek word used 671 times in the New Testament. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm bringing it forth. I'm bringing it forth. I'm bringing it forth. Anybody have a relative and they're just trouble? I got, I got my hand up. I mean, if they come at noon, it's trouble. If they come at eight o'clock in the morning, it's trouble. If they email you, it's trouble. If they text you, it's trouble. If they call you, it's trouble. Anybody have one of those? I got my hand up. I got my hand up. That is a mindset. That is a road they have chosen to go down. We want to be the opposite of that. Amen. See, in other words, they're, they're trouble because they're expecting trouble. They're looking for trouble. They're waiting for trouble. They can't wait for trouble to happen so they can tell everybody about the trouble. But we are to be the exact opposite of that. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. The money's coming. The money's coming. Healing's coming. coming. Phase two's coming. Phase coming. Blessings coming. coming. Getting out of debt is on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every good thing thing. promised in the word of God God is mine mine. and it's on the way and I'm walking in it. Hallelujah. I'm walking in it. Amen. I'm walking in it. See, that doesn't mean I have it all today, but it's on the way. 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 Amen. So I'm not expecting trouble. I'm expecting blessing. I'm not expecting sickness. I, you know, I got, I got no time for people telling me, you know, you know, about what happens when you get old. Who are they talking to? What, who are they talking about? I don't even know. I don't, why, are they, why don't they go talk to somebody else? I don't even want to hear about it. Amen. Man, I, man, I, I mean, I, I got none of that going on. Hallelujah. I swapped DNA. I got the, I mean, my father is my, my heavenly father is my daddy. Hallelujah. Jesus is my elder brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get what you expect and you get what you say. Not by this afternoon. Not by tomorrow. But over time, you get what you expect and you get what you say. And then there's, there's greater ramification here because the actions you take are based upon what you expect and what you say. Now you have the three forces working together, a threefold cord. It's not easily broken. What you, what you believe or expect, what you say, and what you do, get it all lined up, moving in the right direction, and it shall come to pass and it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass. If you weren't here Wednesday night, look it up. I rehearsed the whole story of how we got from that little tiny building up at I-30 here, how we did all of it. It didn't happen in a week. Didn't have, it didn't even happen in a decade. See, now that we're here, people covet it. They want what we got. But nobody wants to do what we did. I said, now that we're here, they covet what we have. But nobody wants to do what we did. You know why? Because it is the day-to-dayness of it that exhausts them. But not me. (laughs) I found out from my great fathers in the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I found out Jesus talked to that woman at the well. Remember that story in Samaria? What what was he doing in Samaria? He's talking to that woman at the well and the disciples go into town for food and they come back, they got food and they say, Rabbi, we have food. And Jesus says, uh, he says, I have food that you know not of. That's my secret. I have food that you know not of. And they were talking among themselves. Does somebody bring them some burgers and fries? And, and, And Jesus said, my will is... He said, my strength is to do my food. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm not wearing out. I'm not growing tired. I'm not getting old. I'm not getting decrepit. Hallelujah. Because I've been chomping on that secret food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been about my daddy's business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And he renews my youth like the eagles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he makes me strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's based on the word of the living God. Let us say what he says. Let's do it one more time. (laughs) Spirit wants to hear it one more time. Say it out loud. Thank you, Father God. I am just as gloriously and marvelously and wondrously healed as I am gloriously and marvelously and wondrously saved. Hallelujah. See, so turn your expector on. That's what's, that's what's happening. That's where you're headed. That's where what's happening in your life. Hallelujah. You, you, think, you think about going to hell? Do you, I mean, do you meditate on going to hell? Do you think about going to hell? Talk about going to hell? I mean, are you meditating on going to hell? Then wh- why do we meditate on our problems and our pains and our aches and our illnesses and what the doctor said and all of that? No, 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 no. We'll see it the next two Sundays. Our redemption is a two-fold redemption. See, we can't earn it, can't deserve it, can't work for it. We, we, we come ready and willing to receive because it is his nature to heal. Same thing with money. It is his nature to bless. It's who he is. It's his nature to forgive. Let's bow our heads. You may be here this morning and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. See, it's the nature of God to forgive God. That's his nature. Some people have this idea that God's dangling salvation out there like bait in front of a fish. No, 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 no. It is his nature to to forgive. In fact, you have to really push him a long, 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 long lifetime for him to give up on forgiving you. It is his nature to forgive. And as long as we have the breath of life in our lungs, it's still available to us. It's when we live a whole life of rejecting God and die that the season for forgiveness is over. Jesus said in John chapter 3, You must be born again. He didn't say it was a good idea. He didn't say it was highly recommended. He said, you must be born again. He said in Revelation chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I've never made Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior, but I want to this morning. I've heard you talk about how good and how wonderful Father God is and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. I want to give my life to God. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. There may be others here this morning and you're you're backslidden. You're not living for the Lord like you once did. You know, the world is alluring. (laughs) The, The world is alluring. And old friends, old habits, old lifestyles, old contacts, And before you know it, we're not living for the Lord like we used to. We're not living for the the Lord like we promised him we would. But thank God, it's the nature of God to forgive. 1 John 1, 9 proves that if anyone confesses his sins, our Father God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I'm away from the Lord. I'm not living for the Lord like I know I should. But I don't want to live in a backslidden condition. Pastor, pray for me. I want to recommit my life to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, and I want to make it right. That's you this morning, wherever you are. Lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. For the sake of those watching online, let's pray the prayer. Father God, I give you my life. Time's gone by. I've gone my own way. I've done my own thing, and I've lived for self. But I turn from that old way of living, and I give you my life. I ask in the name of Jesus that you would forgive me of my sins. I thank you for not rejecting me, but for receiving me. Because I believe in my heart, you raised Jesus from the dead, and I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Can you say amen this morning? If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer as a prayer of commitment or recommitment, write to us at fccarlington.com slash salvation. 
Let us know about your commitment. We'd love to send you a copy of my book, God's Very Own Child. We'd like to be a blessing to you. If you need a Bible, let us know. We have them in English and Spanish. We'd love to send you a Bible. Can you say, thank God for his word? Thank Amen. Thank God for the preaching of his word.